Daniel chapter 11 is key to determining whether or not this book is seen to be of divine origin or is entirely contrived by human hand. Daniel 11 is so specific that many Bible scholars simply put it down to something written after the fact, just a clever rewriting of history to make it look like a prophecy. That means that all the events described in the book occurred during the time of the Greeks, which would have allowed someone at that time to write it all down and put an earlier date on it. But as Peter said, we have not followed cunningly devised fables, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Beside, why would Daniel be placed in the canon of Scripture if it was apocryphal, or one of those extra writings added in later by a non-inspired anonymous writer years after the fact? One thing to do when faced with a difficult chapter like this one is to determine its structure. When taking that step, we find that the chapter is divided into three parts. Verses 1 to 4 deal with the Persian-Greek conflict. Verses 5 to 39 describe the North-South conflict. And verses 40 to 45 talk about the time of the end. The next thing to do is to follow the broad lines of action and the turning points rather than trying prematurely to attach meaning to every symbol. Those turning points look pretty obvious for the first few verses, which describe Persia, Greece, and then hint at Rome. Following this is an ongoing tussle between the King of the South and the King of the North, over which the latter is the eventual victor. Then the last few verses of the chapter talk of the time of the end. So the conflict between the North and the South takes up most of the chapter. Reading between the lines, it appears that the North is a symbol of humanly contrived and politically enforced religion, and the South becomes a symbol of human philosophies that seek to replace God. Those two systems have fought each other through history, and at times it appears as if one or the other has been successful. In the Dark Ages, it looked as if the King of the North, political religious force, was victor. After the French Revolution, the King of the South, human philosophies, looked the winner. But Daniel tells us that these two forces at the end will unite to attack the throne of God. Their war cry is for a new age or a new world order. But the ultimate aim of these religious movements is political power under the cover of godly intentions. All they need is a leader, one that is accepted by all, one who is fair and independent of the powerful nations. In other words, the world prepares for the Battle of Armageddon, a worldwide battle fired by the false hope, already seen in history, of the human ability to build itself a utopia of peace and happiness. But it won't happen that way. As affirmed all through the book, God will sweep aside all political systems to make way for the kingdom of love and integrity that he has prepared for his people. So, do we know all the details? Nope. But we know the one who orders them. And do we know why there are so many explanations? Well, Jesus did say there would be many coming along saying, follow me. But he warned us, they are all imposters. My sheep hear my voice, he said, and follow me. And that is the safest option.